Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi We are discussing about the human capital investment and in the discussion this time we want to understand the following diagram and this diagram is known as the wage schooling locus the wage schooling locus basically give us the relationship between the level of salary obtained by a particular worker with respect to his level of education so if we look at this diagram the vertical axis here measures the level of salary or earnings of the worker and the horizontal axis measures the years of schooling so each of these years of schooling would represent certain types of qualification let's say obtaining up until 12 years of schooling basically this would give that worker a high school certificate and adding another one year of schooling may give the person a post schooling certificate such as certain type of specialized qualification and then 14 years of schooling we may consider that worker may obtain diploma and going for 18 years of schooling this would earn that worker a university degree basically this is how we can understand years of schooling and the type of qualification and in this wage schooling locus we find that each level of qualification represented by years of schooling is associated with certain level of salary or earnings for example having 12 years of schooling in general the worker would land himself certain types of job which on average will pay him $20,000 per year and as he gets to a much higher level of qualification by attending more years of schooling that worker then would earn more income or salary so that's the idea of the wage schooling locus another thing that we can observe from the wage schooling locus is that it is an upward sloping curve so it shows a positive relationship between the level of earnings or salary with the years of schooling in other words the worker earns more as he gets more years of schooling the second observation from this wage schooling locus is that the slope here tells us about the additional increase in earnings or salary for an additional year of schooling later we can represent the slope of the wage schooling locus with a diagram that we call the marginal rate of return to schooling and this wage schooling locus also provides us with the information of the level of salary that firms or employers are willing to pay to workers with respect to certain years of schooling therefore here market would determine the level of salary for each of these years of schooling the intersection between demand and supply in the job market based on certain types of qualification would set the level of salary as indicated in this wage schooling locus we can say that if someone has a degree from any university where the person attends school for 18 years in general the market would provide the salary of thirty thousand dollar per year for such qualification this is set by the market and it is very common that given the wage set by the market according to certain level of qualification workers then would view this salary to be constant for certain period of time for example if you have a degree you may have certain perception about what's the market rate for someone with a degree qualification so this will be constant for certain period of time as viewed by the worker those are few important points related to the wage schooling locus over here i have some key points for the wage schooling locus the properties of the wage schooling locus tells us about number one the upsloping nature of the curve 
indicating the positive relationship between salary and years of schooling and as a consequence of that workers earn more as he gets more years of schooling number two the slope of the wage schooling lockers tells us about the additional increase in earning for each additional year of schooling and this letter is called the marginal rate of return the wage schooling lockers is a concave curve therefore the monetary gains from each year of schooling would eventually diminish or decline and the diminishing return to schooling as indicated by the concavity of the curve would means that each additional year of schooling adds less increase in knowledge and therefore lower additional earnings than previously so this is the four important points that we can derive from the wage schooling lockers the slope of the wage schooling lockers can be illustrated as follows it is called the marginal rate of return to schooling or the short form is mrr the mrr basically is a schedule that gives the marginal rate of return to schooling or the percentage increase in earnings resulting from an additional year of schooling so we get the mrr by computing the slope of the wage schooling lockers therefore a worker maximizes the present value of lifetime earnings by going to school until the marginal rate of return to schooling equals the rate of discount if you can still recall in the earlier discussion we have discussed about how to optimize the human capital level and we are using the marginal benefits and marginal cost diagrams to arrive to that decision now with a better understanding about the wage schooling lockers and from the slope of the wage schooling lockers we can then derive the mrr line here this line the rate of return here is a downward sloping curve because as we get to a much higher level of schooling by obtaining more years of schooling the rate of return is declining among other reason is that it takes us less and less time to recoup the benefits as we get to a much higher level of schooling so it is a downward sloping curve and we assume that the marginal cost of schooling is constant and the cost is represented by the discount rate level indicated by r therefore if the person's discount rate is given at r over here then his optimal level of years of schooling is given by the intersection between mrr and the discount rate level as indicated by r here so this is the point and as such this person would obtain a star level of schooling a star represents certain years of schooling someone with a much higher discount rate as indicated by r prime over here this is usually for a present oriented individual and in this case we find that this is the point where the discount rate intersect the mrr and therefore this person would only obtain s prime level of schooling and here we find that discount rate matters in identifying the optimal level of years of schooling a present oriented individual with a much higher discount rate as given by r prime here this person would obtain less years of schooling as compared to a more future oriented individual with lower discount rate this person then would obtain more years of schooling so these are few things that we can see from this diagram so here i have few more notes about the diagram as i explained to you the slope of the wage schooling lockers is called the marginal rate of return to schooling and to measure the slope of the wage schooling lockers it is given by the change in the level of earning w over the change in the level of years of schooling represented by s 
marginal rate of return to schooling so this is MRR basically tells us about the percentage increase in earnings as a result of having an additional years of schooling because the wage schooling locus is concave therefore the marginal rate of return must decline eventually so from the diagram as also explained earlier to maximize the present value of lifetime earnings a worker therefore would go to school until the MRR is equal to the rate of discount or R. If MRR is more than R, the person should continue attending schooling. But if MRR is less than R, the person should quit schooling. So this is the alternative decision rules for the person. So in between of these two, we find that when MRR is equal to R, that the optimal point for the person to consider attending schooling. I have also mentioned that a worker with discount rates of R goes to school up until S star years of schooling, as illustrated by the diagram earlier. Some issues with the model. Number one, there are many factors that would influence decision to attend school. It is not just based on the level of discount rate R or the future earnings there are many other factors. Another issues about investment in human capital is about future uncertainty to rewards or returns of a particular type of education. Whether you have only high school certificate or diploma or a degree, there are many uncertainties, many unknown about what returns that you will get from those qualifications. Sometimes people with high qualification, they ended up with low paying job and vice versa could happen. So this is another point as a limitation to the model. And we do not know the shape of our wage schooling lockers. By not knowing the shape of our wage schooling lockers, it means that some people may have much steeper than the other individuals. And another important thing here is that we will never know what is the shape of our wage schooling lockers if we stop at certain years of schooling. Say that that individual stopped at 12 years of schooling, then he wouldn't be able to know what's the earnings that he, he will get had he continued to 13 years, 14 years or 18 years of schooling. That's another limitation of the model. So what we can say from our discussion so far, there is a clear relationship between education and earnings. This is well established in the context of modern society like today. From the early discussion, we can see that workers have different rates of discount. This is important because someone with high discount rate about his future earning would be a present oriented individual. He will not invest more for his human capital investment as compared to someone who is a more future oriented, he would have much low discount rates. He would put less discount for his future earning. And then another important factors, apart from individual's level of discount rate, the MRR for one individual to another one also may be different. So over here, we will consider that there are two workers. We will assume that they only differ in terms of their discount rate. Now we focus on the left diagram. There are two individuals by the name of L and Bo. L's discount rate is higher than Bo's discount rate. So from the earlier discussion, we can see that L is more of a present-oriented individual, while Bo is more of a future-oriented individual. Because Bo has lower discount rate, we find that Bo would attend more years of schooling, 12 years, as compared to L, only 11 years. And here we assume that both would have the same level of marginal rate of return. Looking at the right diagram, this is the wage schooling locus for both individuals. However, 
because each of them attend different years of schooling 11 years for L 12 years for Bo then we find that each of them would earn different level of salary W drop is the level of salary for L who only gets to 11 years of schooling while for Bo who obtains up until 12 years of schooling he would earn WHS because attending 12 years of schooling would entitle him to receive the high school certificate therefore over here the left diagram tells us that different level of discount rate would put that workers to invest in different years of schooling and as a consequence of that as presented by the right side diagram each of them would then earn different level of salary so education is important in determining the level of future earnings of individuals if this is the case what if then there is a policy that would require every individuals to complete certain years of schooling for example let's say it is mandatory for every individual to complete up until 12 years of schooling the direct answer to that question is this would ensure in general that everyone would start with some basic level of salary correlated with that years of schooling that's one way how the government could ensure that we can achieve certain standard of living through education so i think that's all for this time see you in the next discussion thank you wassalam